I bit the bullet and bought a fiberglass hood for the 442. The stock hood is really heavy. I mean, I haven't weighed it yet, but it must be 60 pounds easy. So, I had a fiberglass reproduction factory ram air hood, but it didn't fit that well. And I really don't like how they look on 69s. They look better to me on a 70 to 72. That's what they're intended for. They just look funny on a 69 to my eyes. So I found Glass Tech makes a reproduction 69 to 70 S442 hood, the double bump style with no scoops. So I had Glass Tech make me one. Nice people there. Had it done in about three weeks, pretty quick. It was 500 bucks plus shipping. The other thing I screwed up on was uh, they want you to use hood pins with their bolt-on hoods, which is what I got, and which I feel better doing anyway. So I should have had them put in the uh, little pocket for the factory hood locks on the 70 to 72s, and I didn't think to do it. It actually has the piece in the bottom, this half-rounded area. It's probably the same underside they use on the Ram Air hood. So. What I did was have a friend of mine who's a machinist make me these little buckets. If I can get it out to show you. I measured the depth and all that crap. And they're, uh... Jesus, come on, man. I should pop that out. There we go. Maybe these little buckets. So, the depth from here to there was like 0.800. So he made me a bucket and I, uh... You know, cut the hood to fit it. And they... What I'll do is drill and tap the bottom and run two screws up. I'll probably use the uh, whoops, the factory piece that bolts on here to lock this thing in. There's two screw holes in it. Maybe what I'll do is drill straight through and drill and tap the bottom of the bucket and use that plate to fasten that down. So it can't, I mean, it's not coming out of the hood anyway. Once this is locked, what's it going to go? I could use double-sided tape. I could use RTV, epoxy. I thought that might be cleaner. So uh, that'll take care of that. The other thing I did was I wanted to use the factory hood latch. 69's have the single pin style, where 70 has a, I think it has an actual latch that sits up maybe. I want to say it indexes into this. I haven't had a 70 in a long time, so I'm going off memory. But uh, I modified this hood to take the single pin. I made a steel plate. You can't really see it, but uh, right there it is right there. I made a steel plate that goes from here. Let me back up a little goes from here to here up to like here and then over again you can see the edge right there it's right there and I had to relieve it to fit the secondary latch in which actually has wings on the top so the bolts go through the plate and they catch the original secondary latch so now I have the original pin with a steel plate with a nut weld in the back it screws into I was going to use this reinforcing plate right here just to give it a little bit of strength but thinking about it, what I'll probably do is make a bigger plate that'll go it'll pretty much mimic the inside one. It'll go up and over and then over and then down and then over to give it tons of strength. Sandwich it in. And also, I can bolt the original spring back on. It's uh, right here. This goes right here. Where the hell? There it is. If I bolt that back on... Oh shit, it's going to head over there, isn't it? It's going to head over here. Damn it. Oh. I'll make a bigger plate. Maybe I'll just carry the plate over. You know, instead of having to stop here, I'll go all the way over here. I just figured if I hit, if this strikes fiberglass, it's going to poke a hole in it, whereas if it strikes a plate, you know, just give it some strength. I don't know. I'm figuring it out as I go along. <laughs> but uh, that was my idea, was to put this back in. Uh, otherwise, I have to come up with some kind of a spring on top of, I don't know, something in here. I don't know. Just, you know, right now, it works. I mean, the hood will on the sec secondary latch first and then it'll catch the primary latch and that's it it's 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 latched down it's not going anywhere but when you pull this one the hood doesn't really pop up and you can catch it and pull it and you catch the secondary and I guess you could leave the spring out whatever so that'll do it so I have the original latch pin, the secondary latch, and the hood pins. I mean, that should lock this sucker down good. So, that's what I'm working on right now. I still have to hang all the chrome back on it, and the centerpiece. I bought a fiberglass, uh, yeah, fiberglass, it's a plastic centerpiece for here. 
I was going to use the original one, and I said, well, it's a fiberglass hood. I feel stupid using a metal centerpiece. So I bought a reproduction one. They're only 49 bucks. A new hood, chrome eyebrows. But it doesn't line up very well. When you line it up to here, it doesn't really match here and here. The contours are off, probably on the hood, I'm guessing. But it's off to play with that a little. I mean, it's a fiberglass hood. Who really cares? Uh, I got the springs that Glass Tech sells for the hood. They were great. I mean, look at it. The hood will, you know, it'll, when you get to here, it falls down. But, yeah, it stops there. It stops on about a 30 degree angle and holds it up really nice. It doesn't bow the hood up or anything when you close it. Those look great. I'm very happy with this spring. Somebody online said the spring sucked. I don't see anything wrong with them at all. I think they're great. I don't know what he's expecting. Oh, and by the way, this plate actually slides in from here. Uh, and I have springs. Well, not springs. It's, uh, what the hell is it? I tied some, uh, oh, great, I can't find them. <laughs> I tied some stainless steel wire to them. So if I have to pull a plate back out, I can. Evidently, I'm not as smart as I thought I was, so they fell inside and I can't grab them. Shit. Well, hopefully I can find them because I have to pull this plate back out. I just pull the uh, safety wire and this plate will come right with it. You know, I drill holes in it and tied it to it so I can pull it right out. So that's what I'm working on fiberglass hood. And then I'll. If you notice, I have a carburetor on the LS motor. I was having trouble getting the tune right with the uh, fuel injection, the Mega Squirt. So I pulled the turbo off, pulled the fuel injection off it, and I put a carburetor on it and the MSD box to run it. And it, it runs very reliably now. It's way down on power. This is a uh, an LS9 cam in a uh, LQ4 6 liter with LS3 heads. So the bottom end is really soft now with the non-turbo. I mean, with the turbo, it's got amazing off throttle, you know, just light throttle response. So I want to put the turbo back on and pick up the roughly 100 horsepower I've lost. And uh, I had a problem with the wiring for the fuel injection. The cam sensor was uh, the two wires are flipped. It's pretty common in the uh, LS swaps when you go from the rear mount cam sensor to front mount cam sensor. The two outboard wires are flipped, and I had. When I had the harness made, I bought the Mega Squirt. The guy I got it from said, "Oh no, no, we we count for all that." Yeah, bullshit. He did not. So that's what was wrong with it because I put the carburetor on it in the MSD box. It had a really long. I don't know what the word I want to use is. It would start, not stop. It was hit or miss starting, and uh, with the carburetor, it still did it. So I got pissed off and switched the wires the hell of it. And now it starts right up. So I know that was the problem I had with the fuel injection. So I'll. Uh, account for that when I put the injection back on and hopefully I can get it tuned in to my satisfaction and live happily ever after. I ended up buying some new rims for it too. They're uh, US wheel 701s. Uh, I got the fronts. They're 17 by 8 and I ordered 17 by 9 and a half for the rear. I'm just waiting for them to get here. They're supposed to ship Tuesday. And I put new tires on it and uh, that'll be that.